Greetings, YouTube. I fully support an adult's right to make decisions for themselves about their medical care. I even support a terminally ill person's right to choose euthanasia to let them decide when and how they leave this world for the next. But it's a parent's job to make medical decisions for their child. And there are times that a parent's desires run in conflict with the best interest of their child's health. I am of course discussing the current news bit about a mother and her 13 year old son who are currently on the run from the government. The US government would like the parents to have their son given chemotherapy because he has a cancerous tumor. Doctors say that he has a 90 to 95 percent chance of recovering from this tumor if he has chemotherapy. However, the boy and the mother want to pursue alternative health um, concepts. I'm not really sure which ones, but the tumor is growing. And if they are allowed to pursue them until they, to their satisfaction, decide that these alternate methods are not working, it may be too late to save this boy's life. And at 13, it's awfully young to die when it's preventable. Now, I realize that chemotherapy is incredibly unpleasant. I have family members and a dear friend who've gone through it. But it beats being dead. I don't want to be a diabetic. It sucks. But that's just what the way it is. Sometimes you don't get what you want. Sometimes you don't get what you need. Sometimes you just get what you get. And you deal with it as best you can. This woman is putting her personal religious views ahead of her child's well-being. I consider this to be child endangerment, medical neglect and immoral. Her husband is taking a very neutral attitude. He didn't accompany his wife and his son. He stayed home and he's just asking them to come home so that they can be a family again. And I can understand his desires. And I think this boy needs to receive chemotherapy. He needs to be healed. And when he's an adult, then he can decide for himself what kind of medical procedures that he will undergo. I could even see an argument for allowing him to make these decisions once he's reached the age of consent in his state, which I don't know what the age of consent in his state is. In New Hampshire, the age of consent is 16. So I could see an argument for saying that, well, if a person is allowed to make decisions about themselves or sex and are involved, maybe they should also be making decisions about their own health. But at his current age of 13, he's not at the age of consent for anywhere. I think the youngest age of consent in the U.S. is 14, it might be Hawaii, I think Colorado changed that law. But this mother is an adult, and she should be making decisions for her child that are in her child's best interest. There's also another case, a legal case going on at the moment about a woman who imposed her religious views upon her daughter, who was a diabetic, and her daughter died. So a teenage girl was killed by her mother because her mother refused to make sure that she received proper medical attention. This hits a personal note with me because I am now a diabetic. But again, it's a parent who's failing to do the best possible things for their child. And unfortunately, in those cases, the government has to step in and say, okay, this is how you're going to parent because you apparently are un incapable of doing the job yourself. I don't like that kind of intrusion. There are times when that intrusion is required because people are failing to do their duty. They are failing to meet their responsibilities to their children and to the community at large. It's sad, but sometimes people fail and the government has to step in and say, you know, it's time for you to step up and do the job right. 